Welcome to Nerds Talking by nerdsreviews.com. Uh, today is, is episode one of season one, the very first show. Uh, I'm pretty excited. We finally got our intro music done by LA rapper MC Nutso. He's ready to hear this thing. All right, I see what we got. Let's see what we got. Nerdsreviews.com presents Nerds Talking. The podcast. Yo, we talk about lightsabers, stunning your TV screens, what you want to stream, everything beyond your dreams. Want to talk about movies, sports, or even politics? Go ahead and tune into us. We'll give you all of it. Whatever you debate, next box of PlayStation, Marvel or DC, Mac or PC. Terra flops when the movie drops, gigabytes, chips, RAM. No matter what it is, we got all of it. Welcome to the show. Nerds Talking, the podcast. Yeah, welcome to the show, All right. Mac or PC. That's what I like. Yeah, Marvel, PC. DC. PC. Yeah. yeah. All right. All right, today uh, I'm your host, Carlos. I'm here with my co-host, Dennis Rongo, and our special guest, Lafayette Azevedo. Welcome to the show, fellas. Welcome. Uh, Hola. So today... We're going to talk about superhero movies, upcoming superhero movies. Uh, and then our main topic will be uh, fitness, which kind of falls in line with the superhero genre. People just wanting to look like a superhero. All right. So uh, upcoming uh, superhero movies. Lafayette, what are you looking forward to? Uh, Justice League Snyder Cut. Um, that's the one I'm looking for the most because uh, they're adding a bunch to it. They're adding the Joker, they're doing reshoots with Amber Heard, uh, with uh, Ben Affleck, uh, Gal Gadot, uh, Ray Fisher. Man, they're adding a lot to that. Um, they're even talking about just adding more to it, like, like even possibly adding Shazam, just throwing everything at it just because they're like, you know what? Why not? We're going all in. We gave you seventy million dollars. We might as well just dump the whole thing into it. So there's that one. Of course, Wonder Woman, if it ever comes out, and um, that's it. That's all. That's all I got. Those are my upcoming, but definitely Justice League Snyder Cut, HBO Max. My guess is May. May twenty twenty one. Oh really? It's got a date already. No, no, I said that's my guess. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, Dennis, what do you got? Um, I think I'm looking forward to that Wonder Woman. Um, I think that would be interesting. Um, just something, something cool, and I think I, I really like the first one. So I think it's gonna be a, I said it's gonna be a pretty interesting, pretty exciting movie coming up. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and I heard about the the Black Widow, right? That's coming out too. Yeah, um, next is. year. Oh yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's yeah, that's gonna those 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 two movies are pretty exciting. Um, I think as far as superhero movies, uh, looking forward to them. You know what? That's it for on me. The, on the Justice League one, I totally forgot. That, did I mention they're bringing back Jared Leto play the Joker? You did. You said that. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna come back play the Joker, supposedly to fill the gaps from Batman versus Superman and how he ties into Lex Luthor's plan originally to bring dark side to earth. Why would he want to do that? I don't know. Stay tuned. HBO Max. I heard, uh, what's that guy's name? Is it Jesse Eisenberg? Is that his name? Yeah, Lex Luthor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I heard he didn't want to do Lex anymore at all. So really? I read him he back. Loves, I heard that he loves playing Lex Luthor. Whatever I know, but then I heard he just doesn't want to do it anymore. He's like, mm, done with that. I just think what happens is it's too long of a wait. You know what I mean? Like, I think he's like, eh. You know what? That that what, that was 2017 when he shot that movie, right? So, so I think he's like, yeah, I'm I'm over it now. I'm good. So, well, the ones we have uh, coming up that I'm looking forward to is the Justice League Snyder Cut. I'm really interested in that. Um, then we got Black Widow, Wonder Woman, which has a release date of Christmas Day, uh, and then I don't know, uh, Suicide Squad for sure. Uh, the Batman, but I think the Batman got, did it get pushed back to 22? Yes. Correct. 
it's pushed back again. And then, uh, oh, so what do you think of, we got Eternals, Ooh. Shang-Chi, Ooh. The Legend of the Ten Rings, mm-hmm. uh, Morbius, and then Venom 2. Oh, Venom, yeah. Venom 2 is on the slate. But I don't know if that's for next Morbius year. Too. Yeah. You know, it's good you brought up, uh, oh, which one did you bring up just Eternals? now? Oh, the Batman. Oh, the Batman. So, Warner Brothers today came out and said that they want to make a, of course, they want to take that Batman and make a Batman Superman movie. Yeah, who exactly. plays Superman? So, uh, I don't know, but that's what they want. They they want to expand everything through the Batman universe for that, because DC is doing universes, right? So that's a whole different universe. So they want to expand it. But yep, they said they would love to have a Batman Superman movie with those two. Um, so anyway, there's that news, that little tidbit right there. So the Eternals, I don't know. I don't know too much about the Eternals, but it might be really good, like uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. I didn't know too much about them, but that turned out to be really good. I'm a big fan of Guardians of the Galaxy. I don't know. Marvel's oh, yeah. Marvel's been pretty golden so far with all their stuff. But they haven't released the- anything that's that's bad, though. I mean, I can't think of anything that's. I can. Thor one. Marvel. Thor two. Um, Thor one's pretty decent. There's nothing that I walked out of the theater going, ah, oh, ah that wasn't that great but um i don't know if i had to pick a marvel movie where i was like uh well, i guess i could have waited on that that would you be uh, captain marvel I mean, like they did the you know the hulk multiple times right uh, they times. did they did but but the ed norton same. hulk was actually decent i like that i like that one yeah i mean it took them what a couple of a couple of they times did two of them that. yeah yeah uh okay pick your favorite marvel movie but you can't include the Avengers. It has to be a single character. Oh, that's easy. That's yeah. easy. Winter Soldier, Captain America. Okay. Dennis, what do you got? Um, Deadpool. Mm, Marvel character. Not to my MCU, but thank you. Yes, Deadpool's um, good. Uh, for me, it's Thor Ragnarok. I can watch that. Over. Oh, yeah. That, that, yeah, it's a great movie. I love that movie. Well, yeah, because when you compare it to the first two Thors, I mean, this one is just, it's lighthearted, yeah. it's fun, and the characters yeah. really stand out. I think they, they kind of went not... away. What's that? They went away with a serious tone in the first one. Right. And what's the director's name? Uh, uh, Tiki, wasn't it? Is it Tiki? Uh, I don't even know how to say his name. Uh, Tiki, Waikiki, J- Bermuda, Jamaica. Ooh, I want to <laughs> take it. Um, I don't know. I Captain America Winter Soldier is the best one because it's I got what TT. It's like a spy thriller who done it, who's behind it. When you find out Hydra's actually shield, you're like, What? That's crazy talk. Like that oh, whole movie. And that's is oh, yeah. that no. I think I'm gonna go with um Iron Man. Yeah. Uh, from Deadpool to Thor Ragnarok to Iron Man. Well, I mean Pick one. I mean, you're you're running out of Marvel <laughs> characters. You are. I mean, they're all you're pretty soon. You're I mean, gonna name all of they're, them. They're 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 gonna be making some Avengers movie, and they're all gonna be including, you know, the other characters that were not in it. I mean, hmm. Hollywood's some, doing some. Which one stuff. is the most overrated? Uh, mm-hmm. Which one did you go? Wow, I got a lot of hype, and that wasn't all that great. Captain Marvel. Yeah, Captain Marvel I didn't like at all. I just didn't care for it. I thought it was stupid. Um, I liked it. It's just not something where I'd go, I need to see that again. I, I was the same as Black Panther for me. Oh, really? You weren't big on Black Panther? I thought Black Panther was decent. No, the movie's decent, but it was basically, uh, it was Lion King. Um, it was the story Lion was King. Lion The story was Lion King, basically. Yeah. The king dies. The sun goes away for a while. He comes back to reclaim his throne. It was your typical, that story has been done a hundred times over. And then, um, and I didn't understand how they're self-sufficient, but yet they don't, they, they're their own economy. So they're basically, sh- they're, they're living off, what is it? Vibranium or whatever it is. Right. Do they, they even have currency the there? I don't even know if they have currency. 
I mean, they have to have some type of currency in Wakanda. I mean, they have a whole thriving, like, maybe it's a barter system. What are they bartering? I don't know. Nobody really seems to work. And what do they do there? Well, they have to work. You see all the technology and the buildings, and it's like they all super futuristic. They have flying cars and right. But if you don't live in the city, you live in the jungle, which is kind of weird. Why do you treat these people like outcasts? Hey, that was part of the story, wasn't it? Hmm. See, part That's of the story true. where that one guy told him that, like, yeah. Like, and why did uh, why did uh, the cousin, long lost cousin in Oakland, come back? Because that was his reasoning. Why are you not sharing this technology with the world? Why are you holding this to yourself? Like, he was a villain like Thanos, where you could understand his point. Like, you could right. get it. You may right. not be with it, but you go, hey, no, he's making sense. Well, I'm kind of with the guy. Anyway, um, so and it's unfortunate, Chadwick Boseman. Uh, what happened to Chadwick? Uh, so I'm curious to see how they're gonna do Black Panther two. Really curious, see how they're gonna write this. Oh, recast. Write them out. I don't think they're gonna recast. write them out or recast. They're not gonna kill them off, from what I understand. No, no, write them out. They're gonna recast them with like. I don't think it would make Wesley. any sense. Did you just say Wesley just Snipes? recast them. Did you say they'll recast them with Wesley? No, Snipes? I said just recast them. Oh, okay. No, I didn't say Wesley Snipes. I, I said John Claude Van Damme. I thought you said that. That'd be the worst. Uh, um, oh, right. there's a Blade movie coming out too. So, oh yeah, with Mahershala Ali. Yeah, that's right. That's yeah. right. Anyway, so those are your upcoming superhero movies. Right. Uh, and, well, let's um, take a quick break. Uh, stick with JLA. That's what it's I'm looking for the most. Oh, JLA, exactly right. No, so am I. I'm definitely break. looking forward to that. So let's just take a quick break, a break. Uh, and we'll come back cat break. and then uh, we'll move on to uh, our main topic, fitness. All right, we'll be back in a bit. Welcome back. Nerds Talking by NerdsReviews.com. All right, we're moving on. Uh, next topic is fitness um well, like what do you want to know what don't i want to know what i want to know is um how people are in your opinion how people are staying active uh with throughout this whole COVID thing uh you know people i've seen a lot of it's very hard to get weights at home because they're all sold out so people are making their own home gyms so Dennis, what do you think? Well, fortunately for me, I mean, I had, you know, the gym stuff, um, all the equipments before the pandemic hit um, four years ago. So it was never a problem for me, but I mean, I can see, I can see all the, you know, all the different, you know, all the people and, and, you know, due to what's happening, uh, you know, they're becoming desperate and trying to get a hold of like equipments. I mean, a lot of these, you know, a lot of the equipments, I mean, I've been looking too um, for some equipments and some of them are pretty much like back ordered. Um, I mean, you know, I mean, it, it's really hard to get stuff right now. I mean, even, you know, like, even like the, the you stuff that you see on Facebook and Craigslist, uh, some of these people are just trying to rack it up the price and, you know, trying to make some, some money and kind of take advantage of the situation. But yeah, I mean, luckily for me, I've I've got all the the equipment and all the ways that I that I that I need before the pandemic. And I mean, that, you know, people are getting creative in how they you know how they kind of keep up with their fitness. I mean, people are doing the uh, the whole Peloton stuff. Um, I got you know, I got some buddies who's into that. Um, you know, spend a few grand on that. So it's you know, it's a lot of virtual you know. Uh, type of training that they're doing, uh, you know, biking, um, people start doing jump roping, you know, just how do you feel about anything, um, anything just to get out of the house, the technology side of it, um, like this Fitbit, this Apple watch, all these other devices you can use to track your fitness. What do you think of those? I mean, it, it's definitely gained a lot of traction ever since the COVID hit. I mean, you know, people are more sensible about, you know, their health um they're you know 
like they're they're constantly just trying to check their stat, you know, stats and data, uh, make sure their their body's healthy. Um, I think for the most part, I think it's you know it's trending upwards. Uh, you know, people are buying a lot of it. Um, yeah, I mean, there 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 you know there there there's tons of competition in that space, and I think uh, is gaining some grounds as far as uh, popularity. Um, I'm using one myself, so and um. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of you know things happening right now in that space, and um, you know, and related to the data. Well, I personally use an Apple Watch Five, and I've noticed that. Well, uh, I mean, it's not very. I don't believe it's very accurate. Uh, the other day, I was jumping rope. It was telling me my heart rate was at 153 beats per minute. As soon as I stopped jumping rope, I had to measure my heartbeat again. I was just curious. I was at 43 beats per minute. Apparently, I suffered a small heart attack in between starting and stopping because my heart stopped pretty quickly. Is that the uh, latest? Is that the I, latest one? No, that's the Apple Six. The Apple Watch Six is the latest. Yeah, I think and, it's the latest. Yeah. And it's and it says after I finish a workout, no matter how much cardio I do or weights I lift, apparently I only burn 220 calories according to this thing. So I don't think it's very accurate. It's a nice watch when it comes to other. Uh, features but when it comes to the fitness side of it mm, nah i'm gonna try to get my hands on the amazon halo i'm currently on the wait list it's got quite a few features now i know you are also on the wait list can you no, tell mine's... us a little more about the halo and what you know about it yeah i i i did send up sign up for an invitation um like a month ago and finally got an invitation yesterday to actually purchase it um oh nice so it should I, I should be getting it um probably the end of the month Oh, that's cool. It should be getting the end of the month so I can I can start kind of like experimenting with it and, and see what kind of data I can capture. I mean the Fitbit, you know, for me, I mean I got the um the Versa too. Uh, it's an older version, but I mean it is it, I think it's been pretty good. I mean I've been you know I've been trying to keep keep track of you know my 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 steps, trying to keep track of uh, my heart rate, um, you know the the basic stuff, and you know I think Halo Halo is going to be great. Um, I think. Uh, they're they're offering something unique that a lot of the uh, fitness trackers and you know smart wa- smartwatch hasn't done yet, which is um, uh, checking uh, your you know your body fat percentage. Um, I think uh, there's also a feature where you, you know you can check you can kind of look at your body composition um, you know in in, in relation to uh, the picture that you take. So I think that's a really cool feature uh, to have. That's very unique to the uh, Amazon Halo. So I think that's going to be something that's unique to them. And I think, um, uh, you know, in, in Fitbit and uh, Apple, I mean, they're doing, you know, different things. And I think anytime you can add something unique to the, uh, you know, to the lineup, I think it's going to add some value. And I think it's it's, it's going to be a successful, you know, uh, device for them. So, so one thing that I want to mention too was, oh, so it keeps track of my heart rate, right? When I work out. So I'm always constantly looking at it like, wait, I have to like, I want to keep my, my heart rate at 132. So I want to, I need to keep moving. I mean, you know, it, there's, it does, there's other things that, you know, it's contributing to. I want to know from everyone here, the two of you, um, what do you think of the, um, the gym, like gym membership as a whole? Like, what are your feelings on gym membership? I mean, I'll, I'll, I want to hear what you guys have to say, and then I'll let you know what I think of gym memberships. Lafayette. Yeah, gym memberships in what regard to the current situation? No, I mean, like, on my view, it's, um, for example, I'm a 24-hour fitness member. member. Uh, I can't go now, or the one that I go to is still closed. But when I was going in the past, um, I had to have... I have a 24 hour fitness membership, but in order to go to a 24 hour fitness sport, I had to pay more to go to this gym. Even though when I show up, I'm not using any more than what I do at my regular gym. So why should I have to pay more just because it has an extra name on it? I don't use the exercise room, the fitness, the classroom. I don't use the bike room. You know, I don't use the swimming pool, but yet they want to charge me more just to walk in the door. Uh, California it's because they, fitness, you have you have the options to use those like you don't you don't pay for per equipment 
you don't go, hey, I'm just using the treadmill today. All right, today's going to cost you $2, sir. Well, no, I understand like, that. But they're charging me more because they add these features. They added them, but they're charging me more. I get I mean, it. Like, for but... example, I have to travel downtown <laughs> to go to the gym. Say they open one right across the street from me, but it's a sport. I can't go there because if I want to, I have to pay more. So I don't have to continue to go downtown as opposed to just one across the street. Right? Because it's sport. Why don't they just but would charge you pay? Me? Would you pay more for convenience? That's not, that's not the point, though. The point is you're charging me because when I first signed up for 24-hour fitness, it was only 24-hour fitness. There was no sport. There was no whatever else names they have super sport or whatever there was none of that it was just 24 hour fitness as soon as they started doing 24 hour fitness sport then they started charging more oh you got to use this if you want to come here you need this and i'm like why well because we have the classes and we have the daycare and we have the main problem with 24 hour fitness is when they first opened up they were all very large and they had everything available basketball swimming it doesn't matter necessarily what they had everything and then they started opening smaller ones that only had cardio equipment and weight equipment those are 24 hour fitness express or whatever they're called and then they opened up other ones that were just 24 hour fitness express but then they have classes okay so that's called something different so it got to the point where your original gym is now a super sport even though you're like wait why did you guys change the name oh this is the most expensive one now you can still come here because it's your original gym, but you can't go to any other super sport. Well, because they have basketball courts and they have racquetball courts, so on and so forth. That's the flaw is that, well, I've always had that. Why can't I just go to another one just like this if I'm going to go out of town or something? Oh, no, you got to pay extra now because you like to play basketball. Really? What if I only go to play basketball? Can I pay the same price? But you can't. That's the problem with 24 Hour Fitness. LA Fitness, all their gyms are the same. You pay one price. And so forth. But 24 hour fitness, what they did was basically create tiers to tell customers, you know, it's almost like a, a cable bill, right? Cable. You want basic cable? Do you want the middle package or do you want the best package? That's what 24 hour fitness did. And as a 24 hour fitness member, I only go for two reasons cardio and basketball. But yet I still got to pay that $35 a month or whatever it is. But the only upside is I can go to any gym. So um, that's the only upside. But because of the pandemic, I feel like I don't want to bother anymore. It's going to cancel. Like, eh, what's, what's that? I'm good. Like, thanks. Did, did you I think that's going to happen. Or did, did you? Well, no, they haven't They haven't char been charging anyone. So I haven't canceled I, They start charging me. They start charging me. Oh, you know what? Are they open there? 24 Hour Fitness open yeah. in Northern California? Well, that's why. I don't in even Dennis's know how to area, determine. In all areas. So is it because, you know, where I live because it's, it's yeah because it's open well the thing is I, I think they're gonna lose a lot of members I think people are gonna all cancel their memberships I I think especially people that found alternative exercises that may feel like they work for them they're gonna cancel their memberships they're not gonna bother anymore it's gonna be like oh no I'm okay I maybe people got in better shape maybe they just lost weight they felt like oh I never lost weight at the gym but now that I've been doing this certain exercise or diet during COVID, I lost more weight. Oh, I'm not gonna go to the gym anymore. So, but you know, I think I think that's gonna be one one business that's gonna really suffer when they try to come back. I think it depends on gym. it depends on where you're at, though. I think as far as supplements, I think as far as the gadgets, I think the gym, the actual gym itself, is gonna suffer because. You know, that's what I mean. Um, the gym itself, the gadgets aren't. Yeah, gonna, I think people sure. are going to buy more gadgets. I think they're going to buy for more sure. watches, and they're going to, like you said, they're going to buy more treadmills and so on and so forth. They're going to. I mean, you, they, know, you know, Pelotons and you know, the, you know, all these online services are gaining traction uh, because they lost their business from, you know, from from the you know the twenty four. Uh, they're gaining it from the you know the twenty four fitness. Um, oh, they're getting it back. Which, yeah, yeah, now they're, they're gaining yeah, they're, from there. They're gaining exactly. It's like you said. I remember going to a Dick Sporting Goods as soon as COVID happened. They had no more weights at all, mm -hmm. and they didn't know when they're ever going to get them back in. And they said, "I don't know." As soon as it happened, everybody came in and bought every single weight we had, all and all the equipment we had. No more punching bags. No more boxing gloves. Like, so everybody had home gyms now. So, you know, that's just. Uh, that's definitely going to be affected. But I would say 24 Hour Fitness, if you have a, a gym near you, 
like uh, Planet Fitness. Uh, what are the ones they got these days? Um, uh, uh, the CalFit. CalFit. Cal Fit and um, yeah, Crunch Planet, Fitness. Planet Fitness. Yeah, yeah all those that are just like 10 to 15 dollars a month just sign up for those you're gonna get the same workout because no matter what you do it's up to you how much you want to put into it right so if you want to work your ass off those gyms will work exactly the same because there's a lot of people who think that i have to go to the gym i have to get out of the house to be oh motivated, yeah right? well you got those people I mean, like you said that i gotta go i gotta go today for my 30 minutes or and then they tell, oh, I go to the gym every day. Yeah, but you go walk on a treadmill for 30 minutes. You can just walk outside. Right. Like, it, it, it sort of become sort of like a habit, you know, like people are doing these, um, you know, the, the 6 a.m. Yeah, know. they get up yep, before work and they go to the gym. And I feel like 50% of people go to the gym, go to say they go to the gym. Like, well, it's, it's funny because there's going to be a lot of people that, that you'll see the, the same regular people in the gym mm -hmm. and they're going to be the same mm -hmm. people that just kind of look still looks the same after yeah, exactly. all these years what I'm saying. exactly like you'll see the same ladies on the treadmill every day and some people that you tell yourself you don't even need to run anymore you've ran to the point your body can't lose any more weight like you're done you've maxed it out now let's go to a pizza parlor you know like join that membership if you can because you need it oh that's planet that would be planet fitness they offer pizza and bagels they do. Planet Fitness does offer pizza and bagels and donuts. And um, and then we have cable machines. They have very limited free weights. What, yeah, they, the, they, yeah. What's the exactly. one that doesn't have a free weights? Um, Planet Fitness. I just finished. The Planet, Planet Is that the Fitness. one with it? Yeah. That's the one that doesn't have free weights at all. It's right? all, it's all machine do. weights. It's very limited. It's like the dumbbells only go up to 50 pounds. Okay. Yeah. And then they even have like, I don't know, like, signs all over the walls like no grunting zone or something they, they basically they they shame you if you're there to work out heavy and make noise it's a, they don't it's, like that it's a cardio so it's a cardio you. gym it's a cardio yeah, so gym, but they keep so you coming their, back that's the people that they're targeting they give you bagels so you're never going to lose weight if you stay nah, on that track. i think people go there because it's ten dollars a month right that's all if i had one I'll be honest if i had one close enough i'd pay for it because i typically do a lot of cardio i don't do weights i have one closer than a 24 hour fitness I go to, but I'm not, there's no way I'm going to crunch fitness. But the not only crunch, difference is Planet fitness, Planet fitness. I don't have a, you know, I play basketball at the gym and they don't have it. They don't have anything like that. So, I mean, <clears throat> but I mean, um, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Cal Fem so, Fit, they don't have a tier like 24 hour fitness. They just have, I think, I believe it's one fee, but they're expensive. They're really expensive. And the reason I don't like California Family Fit, and I know it's a, expensive. It's a family it's place. There's too many, too many little kids, too many little kids that are like running around the weight area. I'm like, go away, little kid. And they're all out there but because we, their dad's working out, their mom's working out, and they're playing on the weights. Go away. But what do you think about the Amazon Halo? We already talked about that. Yeah, I'm just kind of paying attention. No, I think it's, it's going to be I'm, I'm, I'm just actually, going, oh, you're trying sorry, to go I'm full actually circle. excited about it. I'm actually excited. <laughs> trying to wrap it around. Close it off. I'm sorry, I'm actually excited about it. Now, have you have you guys um so there's you know there's the the regular smart fitness or smart watches and then there's like a fitbit stuff right and then there's like a i don't know if you guys have heard of whoop strap mm -mm. which is kind of the same it's kind of the same as amazon halo it's, it's basically like a strap um it just kind of have some like it has a uh, sort of like this thing that sticks on top of it which is kind of the sensor uh just scans your body like mm -hmm. you know so it's like it's day. like the halo yeah yeah, the, the, just basically the Halo and the and the Whoop Strap. Basically, they don't have any interface at all. Um, there's nothing to look at. And then the you know, and then the Fitbits where you can kind of see like data. So everything is just kind of like it's out of the way. Uh, it just kind of gets out of your way. And I think that the one thing that I, I told Carlos about that I hate about these watches is when I put my my wraps on, it gets on the way. Um, it's 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 super in the way. And I I I just want it to be like just you know. Something well, that's... See, I've seen the Halo. The Halo is no different than a smartwatch. It's just that the strap, the wrist, wa the wrist strap goes over where the interface would be, but you still have where the watches should be. You're still gonna have something there. Yeah, but I mean, there's no distraction of having to just, you know, having to constantly look at your watch or your wrist. Well, it's and... not another question. Do you want, do you want an interface to look at, or do you want to keep looking at your phone? Well, I mean, one that's thing the, to... that's isn't that the idea of like the smartwatch, right? Is to not keep looking at your phone. All the data is right there on your wrist. 
or do you want to look at your phone at all the data? I mean, one thing you have to consider too is the battery life. Um, that interface that you're looking at is contributing to the battery life. So the more, the more, you know, screen that's interesting that you get, too. How long does the Halo battery life last? You know, I think it's about seven. They say about seven plus days. Uh, oh, okay. And how long is the battery life on an uh, Apple Watch? About a day and a half. Maybe a, okay. well, if you use it all day, like you're checking all your messages, your email, yeah, 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 phone yeah. calls, text messages, about a day. It's gonna last you a day. Yeah. And if you want to keep track and, of your sleep, that's not going to happen because you have to charge it before you go to sleep. So you have a full charge in the morning or else you're not going to have it in the morning. You know, Apple enthusiasts freak out if they don't have their the Apple The best way to channel. keep track of your sleep is um, before sleep. you go to sleep, check the clock and then wake up and check it again. Oh, I got seven hours. Oh, man, I could have bought a watch for that. But... <laughs> I have, I've never thought about that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, fellas. I mean, you know, like the Fitbit, for instance, for me, it lasts about three to four days. So I can actually use it to the full extent. I can, you know, track my sleep. Um, I never lose track of, you know, the steps. I don't have to, you know, keep worrying about charging it. And I can just keep track of my, my steps the way I should keep track of my steps. And, you know. Um, I mean, my phone keeps track of my steps. I don't have a, a smartwatch. If, as long as it's in your pocket, it tracks everything. Sure. I mean, so, you know, the, I mean, the, the, thing. I mean having I mean, your the phone in, in your pocket. The difference is. Yeah. I can't track my blood oxygen level, you know, and um, my gas, you know, and all that. Like everything that the watches can do, they can do a lot of things. They can track, right. you know, freaking, did, oh, you accidentally time traveled two minutes ago. I did? How? Don't worry about it. I will explain it in the app. Okay. Let's go ahead and wrap this one up. Uh, we'll take a quick break. We'll wrap this up. We're going to come back uh, real quick. And we're gonna give you a couple of uh, movie reviews. We're gonna end up. Uh, we're gonna end up every show, um, no matter the topic. We'll end the show with either a few movie reviews and definitely some uh, picks of the week for you to check out. Uh, and then uh, we'll wrap it up from there. All right. So we'll be right back. All right, welcome back. All right, time to wrap this up. Um, this week, we reviewed two movies. We got Hubie Halloween, the new Adam Sandler on Netflix. And we've got the live action Mulan on Disney+. Plus. So let's start with Hubie Halloween. Dennis, what did you think? Well, it's quite a great movie, to be honest. Um, but, it, it, you know, it was, it was a fun... I think to me, it was a fun movie. Um, usually, I'm just, you know, I'm pretty picky about what I... What I watch, but I mean, it's Adam Sandler. Uh, it's Halloween. Got to watch that. Got to watch it before Halloween ends. You know what I mean? Um, it was great. I mean, the the characters the same. They have the same usual characters, uh, same cast from. There's you know there's quite a bit of uh, funny moments in there. Uh, you know, I actually laughed a few times. And like I said, it's a feel feel good movie. As you know, the same typical Adam Sandler uh, movie movie feel to it. The ending has some unexpected, uh, I didn't expect, you know, the ending to have happened the way it was, but it was great. Um, kind of keep me guessing the whole time. I think it was, it was great. 3.5. 3.5. Okay. Lafayette, we got. Uh, it is very much just uh, an offshoot of his other characters, such as Waterboy, um, but it's very similar to Waterboy in that aspect. Almost the same story. Over, overprotective mother, kind of a, a goofy guy that people all make fun of and pick on and think he's a dork and um, unexpected love interest. And and, uh, yeah, you got some cameos, Rob Schneider, you got uh, Steve Buscemi, you got uh, Kevin James, you got the mother from, from uh, modern family. I don't know her name, Um, but she's in it. Claire. Um, Claire, yeah, Claire, Claire from Modern Bowman. Family. She's Julie Bowman. It. Julie Bowman. And uh, that's a good cast. It's uh, it's a good Adam Sandler movie, because that's how I put it. Adam's, you know, for being an Adam Sandler movie, it's it's fine. It's It has some funny bits. Um, yeah. I mean, I also, I think I gave it a on the website a three and a half out of five, if I recall, but I can't remember. But you know, it's an it's it's almost like Adam Sandler movies are in their own category. It's a fine Adam Sandler movie, sure. 
Like, let's not. I think go one, one thing that's too crazy. One thing that I want to add is Adam Sandler hasn't really created anything good in you know quite some time. So I think, you know, I mean, it's it, he has come up something. You know, I think this is a pretty good, pretty decent movie that you know after you know many years of not coming up with anything, in my opinion. You know, he's he's best when he's doing this type of formula movie. That's just that's what it is. So. These are his better movies when he plays these type of characters. His last movie was Uncut Gems and the movie he did with, um, what's her name from Friends? I forgot what it was called. Aniston, Jennifer Aniston. Jennifer Aniston. It's also a Netflix movie, which is pretty good itself. So, you know, three out of five. Watch it. It's a good Halloween movie. It's not, you know, it's not a Halloween classic, but you'll enjoy it. You'll get some laughs. So, yeah, three and a half out of five. Like I said, it's, it's, a, it's you know, it's not bad. It's. You know what's, what's great about um, Huey Halloween? Is that you can just play it in the background, do some, you know, do something, right? Um, and then just come back to it. You feel like you didn't miss anything. And still, it's just still entertainment. I mean, it has some entertainment value as part of it. I mean, you know, it's it's just one of those movies. You can just play in the background and you have to be tuned in the whole time. Well, I'm glad you guys liked it because I did not. Um, I thought it was sophomore. I mean, it's PG-13 is definitely directed, I mean, directed towards 13-year-olds, 13 to 18-year-olds, maybe even 21-year-olds. It's totally sophomore. I, did, I didn't like it at all. I thought the funniest part was when the Julie Bowman character, Violet Valentine, Valentine uh, threatened to beat a woman with her own cat, and the cat had this look on, her, on his face like, what? Oh, that lady yeah, I thought was... that was the funniest part of the movie. I didn't, I didn't really enough. enjoy it. I thought uh, Rob Schneider's character was totally not needed. Pull him out. You still got the same movie. Uh, yeah, so Adam Sandler, for me, just lost his appeal. I mean, I, after Waterboy, I hadn't seen anything decent. But yeah, so I give that a uh, uh, two out of five. It's a solid um, two, huh? And it's weird that, you know, it got... Uh, and the reason it got... They made a big deal about how it was number one on Netflix right away when it came out. Well, of course, nobody has anything else to watch. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, and you're everybody's stuck at home, so you're gonna watch whatever comes up new on Netflix or Amazon or whatever. If, uh, I think people would have watched it even if without the situation, current pandemic problem, because he's the big name for Netflix. Oh, Netflix got Adam Sand. Oh, oh yeah, I'll watch an Adam Sandler movie. I just if Netflix got. The Rock to sign a contract. No one would ever miss a movie because it's streaming for free. Because you know, The Rock like, will do anything, and not anything, and not everything he touches is gold. He but you would, it is, but, but it's not. But you would probably watch it. No, no, to say you'd finish it. Yeah, I guess so. Oh, and the but, Aniston movie is called uh, Murder Mystery. That's right. It's Murder. pretty good. It's pretty good. Okay, pretty so good. I gave it a two out of five. <laughs> Let's quickly do Around the Horn. Can I even say that? Sure, I can say that. Whatever. Around the Horn for Mulan. Um, Dennis, what did you think of Mulan? Live action. Um, you, you know, it's it's one of those movies. It has so much hype built around it um, that didn't really live up to the expectation. Um, I was really excited. Excited. Uh, you know, they were the, when they first announced it, but yeah, it's just hit. It just basically didn't hit like a lot of you know the marks that I was kind of expecting it to be. Um, yeah, it, it didn't. You know, there's there was a lot of uh, hype around it and the, the trailers and all that stuff, but the trailers didn't really give a lot of you know, as far as the scenes is concerned. It just kind of you know it's just there's a lot of cut scenes and all that stuff. But you know, I was just kind of hoping it would follow the original a bit more as far as the characters because you know the biggest uh, you know the biggest the, the best thing about the, the, the original animation mo animated movie was the uh, the characters itself. Same thing with Aladdin. I mean, that's sort of what created the movie to be, the, you know, to how how good they were. Um, uh, you know, I miss having that dragon. I miss having the, the cricket. And I think the phoenix, I, did, I never really understood uh, the whole, you know, the concept of the phoenix, except this just kind of fly, flies above everyone else. Um, it just, you know, it just didn't have a lot of, you know, the things that I'm kind of looking for. It didn't have the comedy uh, side of things. Uh, the characters were just pretty boring. It didn't really, didn't have anything that stands out as far as the characters uh, development. Um, 
and yeah, just just kind of disappointed as far as how they kind of went about it. Um, you know, with you know, they didn't follow the the storyline of the original uh, animated movie. It just it's just like you know, it didn't it didn't really do it for me. As far and what did you give it? I I would give it honestly. Like I'm really not a very uh, I mean, since I really had a high expect, very high expectation for the movie, I think I would give it a one. Uh, Ooh, wow. I mean, I don't really yeah. give a movie that low because I don't want to waste my time on just, you know, if I know it's going to be a one, I'm not going to watch that movie. But, you know, it's a franchise movie. It's Mulan. Um, you know, Disney was hyping it up big time, um, you know, before it get released. So I was kind of excited about it, but just kind of, it didn't do it. So, yeah, I give it a one. All right. Wow. Yeah, you're up. You well, think? I had low expectations going in. When they announced Mulan as a live action movie, I thought that's a stupid idea. And then when they said there's no Mushu, I was like, okay, got even dumber. And when they said it's going to be more serious, which it was more serious, it w- that's not fun. And my m- number one flaw in the movie was you can clearly tell that's not a guy. You're not, you can't be that stupid. You can't, you can't at all. That's, that's what I said. That is a girl the whole entire time, no matter how hard they try to cover it up. The cartoon's easier. You can make it easier. You can't do that in live action. She was good in it. Um, the action was decent. Uh, the movie wasn't, yeah, it was kind of boring. It had no humor at all. The Phoenix thing was kind of stupid. Uh, I thought uh, Jason Scott Lee was good in it, though. I think uh, on the website, I gave it a two and a half out of five because, like I said, the pluses was the action. The acting was good. Like she, she was good as Mulan, but it just wasn't that entertaining. It just wasn't. It's that's that's all it was. It just wasn't that entertaining. When you when you have to compare it to something like you do the cartoon, it wasn't that entertaining. Uh, unlike Aladdin, when I watched Aladdin, I was very entertained watching the remake, the live action Aladdin. I uh, had a lot of funny stuff. Uh, Abu was still hilarious as a little monkey. The, the genie was well done the music was so on and so forth this one i just cut everything out and just made it kind of serious and i was like eh um it's good but it's not entertaining it's just it's like it's it's a girl it has nobody noticed that that's a girl yet you stupid idiots anyway two and a half out of five well no i i have to agree with the the low score um it's def i mean if you were to compare it, obviously if you're comparing it, obviously you're going to compare it to the cartoon, then yeah, you're definitely going to be disappointed. Um, the Phoenix, replacing Mushu with the Phoenix, um, adding the new character, the, uh, I don't know if she's a witch or who she was, but I didn't really bring anything to it. I really didn't. Yeah, I found it boring. It was boring. Um, I, thought, I mean, the actors and actresses did a good job, but it was just boring. I mean, you could have left the room for a half hour, come back. I'm like, oh, it's still on. Okay, cool. Whatever. Uh, like Hubie Halloween. That's Dennis's take on Hubie. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so mm, yeah, so I'm just saying, I'm going to give it a two out of five. Uh, I mean, if you have nothing else, I mean, Disney Plus isn't really offering much. So if you have Disney Plus, oh, wait, no, you do you still have to pay for it? Or is it you now have to pay free? for it? You have to, have to pay, pay for, for it. it? Yeah. Free. Oh, you're talking about for Mulan. Mulan. It's not. No, no, not till December. It's it, it'll be free on Disney Plus in December. In December. Okay. Well, well that's that's another topic to that we can talk about. But that's yeah. I just didn't like that. That you know, having to pay for that extra just to watch a. Uh, I was. You know what? Okay with that. It was just too expensive. You know. Well, my take well, on yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, is, you might pay thirty bucks going to the theater steep. anyway, right? I mean. Today's and that's prices, how I look at it too. You're paying thirty bucks yeah. just for the tickets, and then if you go to concessions, yeah. you're gonna pay more than that theaters. Like, right. and remember, you only get to watch it once at the theater. With Mulan, once you once you get it on Disney Plus, I think it stays on there for you. It's not okay. a rental; it stays on there. So, like, if they did Black Widow and they said it's gonna cost you forty dollars, I'd do it. That's how much I'd pay to go see the theater to, for two people. Okay, sure. Pretty I get much. to watch that at home too, and I don't have to go anywhere, and I can probably watch it more than once. Right. Why not? not? That I mean, you're in the safety of your own home. Who knows what? Unless, yeah, unless yeah. you're watching by yourself. Um, but if you're gonna go, here, here's another thing. If you're gonna go by yourself anyway, that means you're willing to spend the money, right? Like you, that was just shows you really want to see that movie. Okay, then pay the money. Probably. I think yeah. I think thirty dollars is reasonable 
for a big budget movie. I think they should base Absolutely. it on the budget also. So if like, let's say Wonder Woman all of a sudden is going to be on HBO Max premium, whatever they want to call it. And it's $30. That's worth it. But if they want to put an Adam Sandler comedy on HBO Max, it should be $10. You know, it should be based on the budget of the movie also. So, but um, yeah, that's fine. I mean, renting it and so forth is fine. I just, Mulan should have been free from the beginning. Should have been just like, hey, look, we're gonna we're gonna try to give Disney Plus more viewers. Here's a free movie. Well, to me, the biggest thing is, aren't you trying to lure more, you know, you know, more, you know, more, more consumers, subscribers. To, more subscribers. Right. I mean, that's 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 the whole point. I mean, you come up with something huge, right? Like I'm that's Mulan why Mulan thing. should have been free. And you know, you want to entice people to, hey, we have an exclusive content that's just is going to be on Disney. We don't have the licensing yeah. issues that. Amazon and Netflix has to deal with, well, here's, you know, just sign up for what, how much, six ninety nine and whatever for, a, and with, a, you know, I mean, to me, that's a, the, the biggest, the biggest drawing, you know, it, it's probably a bigger, it's probably better as far as business wise, business decision wise for them. I mean, to kind of get more, you know, subscribers, right? I mean, $29. Okay. You know, how many people are really, gonna want to pay up and say hey i want to pay up 20 dollars so i can see it right away instead of having to wait for a couple of months well, before just i can it. see it that's for mulan right if they came out yeah. and said hey dennis do you want to watch you know the new gardens of the galaxy 3 for 30 dollars you might say yes but for mulan you're not going to say that you know what well, I, mean? I mean well it they depends say, well, on the content you have to be a, you have to content. be a member and you have to pay 20 dollars on top of it like well, you know, Disney's if I'm not flaw, a member, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna be Disney's, like, you know what? Well, Disney's flaw is they're too cheap. They shouldn't be seven dollars. They should be like twelve dollars, and then they can cover the cost of any production for movies that they want to make if they end up getting enough subscribers. Because Netflix is fifteen dollars, I think, right? Fifteen, and they probably have. Man, I would guess worldwide they probably have at least twenty million subscribers. Now think about how much money they make a month. It's ridiculous. That's why they can produce all these all this content. They have endless amount of money coming in. Yep, so they have to constantly sure. produce new content. And so they don't have to charge you for the new Adam Sandler movie. They already paid for it. It's done. You know? Yeah, and, and they have tons of international contents too. Oh yeah. Um, I watched a ton of that. So Japan, Korea. Yeah. But but definitely um I would uh yeah, Mulan two and a half, QB for me was a three and a half. I did enjoy it more than Mulan. Um Dennis gave Mulan one. He gave Hubie a, what, three and a half? Yep. And uh, Carlos gave Mulan a two. And Hubie, you gave a two also? So they're equal in Carlos's eyes. If they put Hubie in one theater and Mulan in the next, he would have to sit in the middle somewhere. So. All right, all right. fellas. So uh, real quick, final thoughts, and then let us know what your top three uh, picks of the week are for a streaming service what you're watching and on what service are you watching it on dennis you're up make it quick um i don't watch amazon uh, amazon video so I'm, I'm not gonna i don't have anything to, to say there but netflix wise um you know i've been watching uh, the greatest the great british break, baking show i think that's a great um, family you know show that we, you know we watch during dinner um, it's a great show um, I started with watching the Un Unsolved Mysteries. Um, that's a really good, they, they, you know, they really did a great job on, on production uh, for that. It's a, it's a TV, TV series, just kind of documenting certain events that, you know, seems, uh, you know, some phenomenon uh, that happened. Um, so that's one of the, you know, one of the good sh TV shows. And as far as actually two TV shows that I've kind of, uh, uh, that are like uh, the haunting of Bly Manor is pretty good too. Um, that, that's a great one. I'm halfway through it. Um, it's a great show. You know, it's it's, it's not as, as scary, but you know, the it's quite a bit of suspense. Um, it's a great TV show uh, if you like, you know, suspense and a little bit of haunt. You know, uh, scary horror mm. type of movie. All right, all right. Yeah, what do you got? I got. Just tune in this week to watch Borat 2 on Amazon Prime. It looks hilarious. Also, go to HBO Max to watch the remake of The Witches. I think it premieres this week. 
Um, if you guys don't remember the witches, the oh, is that popular. um, what's that lady? Anne Hathaway. Um, yeah, Anne Hathaway. She's the, she is the main witch. Uh, it's a remake of a movie from I think the early '90s. It was a really popular movie about the witches that kidnap children and want to eat them. Um, and they like they're in a they all meet up at a hotel banquet hall and had a really famous actress. I think it's Meryl Streep for some reason is coming to me. I think she was the lead witch in that one. Anyway. So tune in to HBO Max for The Witches. And if you're on Netflix for the week, I would say there's a lot on Netflix to watch. But for this week coming, oh, watch La Revolution. It's pretty good. It's a French show dubbed in English. Pretty good. For the kids, tune in to Glitch Tech and Cupcake and Dino. I love those shows. And avoid hoops at all costs on Netflix. It's a crappy show. Those are my take. Uh, I'll give you some Hulu next time around if I can find something worth watching on there. All right, for well, for myself, if you got Amazon, don't miss The Boys. If you like superheroes, but you like violence as well, don't miss The Boys. Two seasons out now. Uh, season two, uh, they didn't put it all at one time. They did it per week, but now it's all out so you can binge watch both. Uh, Disney Plus, The Mandalorian starts next week. Don't miss that. If you're a Star Wars fan, even if you're not, you're going to enjoy The Mandalorian. It's really good. So you can catch up on season one first, and then season two starts on Friday. And then on Netflix, I'm kind of watching a lot of stuff. I'm with you Dennis. Guys, I'm watching the Great um, British Baking Show. Do oh, you guys have Apple? Apple TV. I'll, yeah, yeah, I'll throw one that way because you guys covered Netflix. Ted Lasso. If you have Apple TV, don't miss Ted Lasso. That is a great show. All right, that'll do it. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you tune in next week. Hit the subscribe button if you want to stay with us. Or if you just want to come back and check it out next week, maybe hit it next week, but hit it anyway. Goodbye from your host, Carlos Azevedo. Lafayette, you got a goodbye for us? Yeah, uh, subscribe, unsubscribe, subscribe again. Turn on your notifications. Unsubscribe, subscribe one more time. That'll move us up the charts. Thanks for tuning in to Nerds Talking. Until next week, remember watch something on tv okay that's all i got all right dennis what do you got your final goodbye be safe don't get covid19 peace out be safe all right everybody till next week bye-bye